welcome to No Ordinary Woman Chat Show. I'm your host, Miss Kazmak. Now, on this show, you're going to meet some amazing, phenomenal women who are doing extraordinary things within our society. Some of you may or may not know about these women, but on No Ordinary Woman Chat Show, you hear about their story, how they got started to be where they are currently. So watch the advert and see me on the other side. Bye. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you for coming back. Now, I said you're in for a treat. You're going to meet an amazing, amazing, phenomenal, no ordinary woman that we have on the show. But let me just give you a little introduction about this guest. This guest is born in Glasgow. Now, this guest is a London College fashion graduate. Yes, she loves her fashion, cosmetic scientist, and founder of Black Beauty Communications Limited. Now, I'm not going to go too much into it. I'm going to let this guest just tell you about herself. And her name is Cheryl Jumbo. So, guys, meet Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Hi, Cam. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. <coughs> you look amazing. Thank you. I'm it's... loving your hair. I'm loving the old attire. Go. Listen, you. every time women come onto this show, I... I I kid you not, they just look absolutely amazing. But sometimes I'm finding people doing these colour coordination things and they just don't send me a memo and I just think to myself, uh, what, people can't <laughs> DM people, let me know what's going on. Like we can just kind of like, you know, kind of inter you know, interlink and just do the same similar <laughs> colour thing. But at least you've got the navy and I've got the light blue, so it's yeah, all good. Yeah. So well done on you. So share with our views. Who is Cheryl? Wow, who is Cheryl? Oh. Um, well, I could say I am a black female, it's obvious, um, born in Glasgow to Nigerian parents. So, um, so they went to, went to Scotland mm -hmm. and they studied there and that's where they had myself and my younger sister. Wow. So that's how come I was born in, in Scotland, yes. So what, I mean, in regards to them coming to Glasgow, yeah, because I can hear a little bit of the accent coming on. Little, 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 little. <laughs> but how, I mean, I, I mean, we're not going to just focus on your parents, but what were they studying? Um, well, Dad did economics. Mm -hmm. Mum did midwifery. Okay. Actually, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how did you end up becoming a um, studying fashion? Actually, it's, um, it was a happy accident, mm -hmm. actually. Um, I studied, started studying sound engineering, loved the creative side of music production. Um, one day, while shopping for some makeup, I met a very glamorous American beauty consultant. She worked for a fashion fair cosmetics, which was one of the bigger brands yeah. back then. So I was there to buy some makeup and she asked me a lot of questions, really quite personal actually, mm. about what I'm studying, where I see myself, what I want to do with my life. Oh, wow. um, and so those key questions sort of um, brought things to the surface. I told her I'm doing sound engineering. She just kind of scoffed and said, no, you're in the wrong profession. I see you in the beauty industry. I see you, I can see you now with a, a little briefcase going to beauty business meetings. And I guess from there, the seed was planted. Um, went back to studying sound engineering. Mm -hmm. um, being open-minded, I thought, let me at least just delve in and, and see what this beauty is all about. I thought it was a little fickle. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up getting a part-time job as a beauty consultant, started serving ladies and just being naturally creative, applying makeup, talking to the consumer wasn't necessarily a challenge for me. But what did um, 
start to why well, I did start to question was what was it about these products mm. that made the consumer come back mm. what were these ladies looking for specifically that these products was giving to them and in terms of their performance how were these products able to deliver mm. what it said on the packet so um, from there I just looked into studying um, a degree in cosmetic science actually I was quite fortunate because the course had just been introduced to the UK and was in its second year so I was one of the first batch of graduates to actually study that degree. Wow. Mm. That's amazing. And in regards to um, you studying about why the consumers are buying the products, what, was you, what did you find in your finding? Well, you know, the industry has been under the microscope for various reasons, mm -hmm. um, some good, some bad. Mm -hmm. um, Pots of Promise was one of the sort of cliches I used to hear floating around the industry. And so women did start to look at these pots as pots of promise. Mm. They were going to make their lives better. Um, the ingredients that they used, um, some of them were you know, exclusive to a brand. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, 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 um, the research that went into creating a product that's different, yeah. sometimes that stood out to the consumer as something new and innovative. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that also stood out was actually, funnily enough, the packaging. Yeah. A lot of the women who purchased luxury makeup weren't just buying a colour or a shade of makeup. They were buying into a lifestyle, buying mm. into a dream. Mm. And that's why a lot of the luxury brands like you know, your, your Yves Saint Laurent yeah. will make their packaging so beautiful mm -hmm. that um, you don't really care what's inside the packaging. It looks brilliant, yeah. but it's an added bonus if the product performs mm. well which fortunately some of the brands that I did work for had the benefit of great packaging mm -hmm. and great performing products. If you look at a brand like MAC per se, yeah. not particularly flashy looking, very basic in their product um, packaging design. Yeah. So they're trying to tell you this all about the product itself. Mm -hmm. Don't be distracted by, by the, the packaging. Yeah. So it's all about the branding and how you want to be perceived by, by the consumer mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So in regards to um, your actual um, organisation, organization mm. and obviously you've got an upcoming award um, that's going to be taking place in 2018 mm. so how did that come back is that obviously based upon what you've learned in regards to the branding and cosmetic science and everything it else? is it is it's some of that um, being someone that's been in the industry now for a very long time, yeah. 17 years, it's something I am truly passionate about. Um, being a formulator of cosmetic products mm -hmm. and seeing them go to, to market, seeing ladies like yourself go into stores and purchase them and say they mm -hmm. love them, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Um, but one thing I, didn't, I noticed about seven years ago was that although I work in the industry, I didn't feel represented right. in the industry. So when you said represented, represented in what sense? Um, from a mainstream standpoint. So um, I would have to attend industry awards. Mm. Um, some of the brands I worked for, their products were top performing brands. And what was brilliant about that is, yes, a product that I've worked on is a winning brand. However, what products are being spot uh, in the spotlight that actually are designed and catered to my skin or hair and beauty right. needs. And as I looked around, I found less of them. Mm. So even at the some of the I won't mention any names, but some of the larger premium brands, you would find that they have maybe. 30 shades, but mm. are only stocking maybe 20 of them. Mm. And they would say that the reason they don't stock darker shades is because women of color are not buying into these products. There's no demand for them here in the UK. If you go to the America, you'd mm. see maybe 30 shades of that mm. from, from, from that company. Mm. So the, for, for a very long time, um, many brands that could cater to us were saying that there wasn't a market for us. Mm. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I wanted to see more um, representation in terms of the colours mm. um, that I would use, um, people that look like me actually in adverts. Mm -hmm. There is obviously the obligatory afro, you see that everywhere yeah. you go, but you know, we don't all identify with that. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah so that's, <laughs> that's interesting because even as you're saying, um, in regards to you know, it's being quite limited. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, what, what I'm receiving from you, it's being quite limited for, like, say, with women of ethnic minority, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the the products, etc. But 
would you not say now, you know, in this time that we're living in, that we are seeing a change, we are seeing a difference, you know, because you're seeing so many other, you know, um, individuals who are creating their own products. I mean, if you look at Rihanna, you know, created her own brand mm -hmm. and then done an amazing mm -hmm. job and things like that. So do you not see that there is like a shift happening now? Absolutely. Mm. And that's why we created the awards. We, the awards were, were founded seven years ago, um, but seven years it would have years ago it would have been seen as a race issue yeah whereas um rather than a gap in the market it needs to be filled um two years ago there was a shift in equality mm. you know transgender gay rights all mm. these kind of things the shift was more about your lifestyle and mm. your quality of life so we introduced the black beauty and fashion awards um one thing that um we, we we value greatly about this is as you mentioned there are new entrepreneurs entering into the marketplace some of the bigger companies are um seeing this gap and trying to cater to it and then you have the likes of rihanna then you also have the likes of yourself you know no ordinary woman who has seen a gap in the market and and seeks to fill that gap yeah. now these smaller individual entrepreneurs find it almost impossible to compete with the larger companies Absolutely. in terms of marketing spend. You yeah. know, Coke would never be as big as Coca-Cola. Yes. And that's where the Black Beauty and Fashion Awards come in. We understand, as an entrepreneur myself, that there are major challenges in visibility. Yeah. And so by creating this platform, we give entrepreneurs and creators and producers of products for women of, um, um, of ethnic Black, backgrounds yeah. um, some visibility mm. so that the consumer can see them um, and realize that there's yeah. a product out there made for them and maybe even by someone that looks like them yeah that's amazing and i like the fact that you're doing this award ceremony if you can just ex um, expand a bit more okay. to the viewers mm -hmm. what will they find in regards to your event what's going to be so different about your awards rather than go say to you know um like going to um, afro hair show live and okay. you know going to the black hair mm -hmm. awards ceremony etc what's mm -hmm. going to be so different about your event well the one thing that sets us apart is first of all the black beauty and fashion awards are the, is the only industry award that focuses on the manufacture right. the development and the retail of black beauty products for years i've had awards for the service providers you know the sal um great salon mm -hmm. great hairdressers but in terms of the products itself many um women have questioned whether some of the products are safe mm -hmm. um, there's been reports that have talked about tox toxicity mm -hmm. of certain products used by women of color um, so what's different is we're actually focusing on the products themselves right. um, and then also celebrating the, the individuals that make these products so um, being the people's choice award we have a range of categories that you uh, and uh, public can, can vote in so we have best moisturizer best shampoo oh, wow. best conditioner we have a male grooming section too so you can vote for the best uh, beard product um, we have a number of special awards so we have beauty entrepreneur, hair entrepreneur, best new business venture. Ooh. And under that special award category, we have the constituency award. We're very fortunate to be able to launch at the Houses of Parliament wow. during the summer this year. Off the back of that, one, um, our hosting MP, Chi Onwura, requested to add a category to the awards. So at, at, at well, presently, we actually have MPs from Scotland to Wales voting for, oh, sorry, submitting um, nominations mm -hmm. for businesses within their constituency. Oh. And, um, you know, unfortunately, black beauty is a little political. Mm. And I think that's why we had to go to the House of Commons. And I wanted to get the backing of the government mm. in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So having the MPs actually get involved, nominating businesses, making businesses more visible, uh, is, is just fantastic news for us as, as an award. So... We are very different to what's already out there. We are the UK's first award of its kind. Um, and we hope to actually see this happen in different parts of the world as that well. That sounds amazing. Mm. So in regards to the event, could do you share with our viewers, how could, it, could is this open for anybody? To it attend, is. By the way? Um, although it is industry focused, mm -hmm. I felt it was important um, for visibility and to inspire and encourage. So we have um, industry professionals who will be there. We are offering free tickets to a number of students. Okay. As long as you're studying business, um, at, well, uh, a course related to business, fashion, um, 
beauty and um, science. Right. If you are studying any business um, related course to any of these subjects, you could attend for free. You just have to email us okay. and tell us why you want to attend and your name will be picked at random amongst others. Um, then we have um, our VIPs, um, some of the MPs and our mm -hmm. Um, industry professionals yeah. and members of the public. It's important that the ordinary everyday person who has an interest in hair and beauty and business get to witness some of the success yeah. that's happening within the industry and um, it's important that those things are seen. Often they say that we don't have enough role models yes. within our community. We have an abundance of role models and aspirational people and I encourage people to come and see them at the Black Beauty and Fashion Awards. That sounds amazing, mm -hmm. and I will definitely be there myself. So do um, give your social media um, platforms to our viewers as well. How do, can they connect yes, with you, Cheryl? Yes, you can find us on Twitter at BBF Awards, um, on Instagram, Black Beauty and Fashion Awards. You can find us on our website, which is www.bbfawards.com. And last but not least, I think you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, and Facebook, yes, Facebook. We have a group called BBF Awards. Awards, it's all the same, BBF Awards, just put it into Google, you'll find us. <laughs> and in regards to the voting category, is that also yes, open to the Yes, actually, as well? we have one um, last voting category left. We are currently voting for influencer. So we have hair and beauty influencers and we have fashion and lifestyle influencers. So you can have your say, just visit our website, www.bbfawards.com, and go to voting online and have your, have your say. Excellent. So just going to just shift this a little bit. Mm. So what challenges have you faced since, you know, started? Oh, there's always challenges, isn't there? Yeah. The challenges that give us muscles. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Um, <laughs> no pain, no gain. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I think one of the things I did find surprising, mm. um, you know, the BBFA was born out of social exclusion, not feeling counted, not being recognised within the mainstream capacity. I realised that we have an, a huge economic issue. Um, many people said that the BBF Award should be a not-for-profit organisation oh. so that we can get funding. But I think that as a black business, we need to be very much self-sufficient so we can help other businesses. Yeah. And we talked about young people and students. Let's say you want to go into studying a, a degree and you're having financial hardships. A mm -hmm. company like myself should be able to, to so offer so some yeah. guidance and help. Yeah. Um, so just generating the capital mm -hmm. for a start has been a challenge some of the businesses i felt i would have naturally partnered with right um actually view the bbfa as competition oh. you know a lot of people don't know that the, the black beauty industry was founded by three black jamaican men um that came came from jamaica as young men started in music mm -hmm. and branched into um, the beauty industry right. they became one of the first black millionaires the uk has seen Many of us don't know that the first female millionaire in America also was a black female mm. and she made her millions from hair and beauty. Interesting. So, you know, I guess sort of starting something new is a bit of a bold move mm. and using the word black as mm. well, it can be, it's quite powerful it, it seems. Mm. And um, it does get mixed reactions. Mm. Some of the larger companies that we use religiously have said we don't want to be part of your awards. We, they don't want people to vote for them. They just don't want to be part of BBFA. But yet, you know, yes, black women are, 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 are spending their money with this brand. Oh so goodness. those are some of the, the, the disappointments and challenges that I've, I've witnessed so far. And there'll be many more to come, but yeah. we just have to you know, keep, keep pushing on. Mm -hmm. So how are you facing overcoming those obstacles when you come to um, I think just be, um, being part Nigerian, being part Scot Scottish, <laughs> it gives you great resolve. Yeah. <laughs> Scots don't take much nonsense and neither do the Nigerians. Yeah. Um, but no, but, you know, not to be too cliche, but, you know, prayer, mm. um, having the guidance and the love of my most high is, is a driving force mm -hmm. for me. Um, and just the will to succeed. Mm. I think that when you truly are passionate about something, you just got to keep pushing, you know, you're going to find those hurdles and it's going to be difficult, but you know, what, what is easy in yeah. life? Yeah. So just keep pushing on um, and, until, until I get to the finish line, yeah, basically. that's good, that's mm -hmm. really good. But what I would also ask is, um, 
two things I want to ask you mm. actually is in regards to you doing your business now, is that what you just do full time? Do you have another um, form of income coming? Do you work elsewhere? Do you work part time? No, or? I am completely self employed. Um, right. Black Beauty Communications is the business. Is, is, is the, the business. business? Yeah. BBFA is a, a project. Yes. So I do mentoring consultations. Mm -hmm. People that want safety assessments um, to have their products tested, um, labeling, packaging requirements. I work as a consultant. So if anyone out there is making cosmetics and wants some help, get in touch. I like Cheryl. <laughs> so you wear like the long white yes, coat. Yes, I got my lab that. coat and I love it. I got oh, my spectacle. You should have came into the show and we'll dress <laughs> up like next that. Next time I might just. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, Cheryl, so thank you, because you kind of like touch base on giving an inspirational message to our viewers. But if you can just say something to a possible person who wants to get it, become an entrepreneur, they've got great ideas, what would you say to that person who is watching right now? They just need that motivation. Okay, I would say this. There is a quote, um, our people perish for lack of knowledge. One thing that we need to do when we go into anything, especially business, is equip yourself with the right skills and a knowledge base. So do your research, do your homework, understand your market, um, have a sound, strong business plan, um, and, and have a strategy, first and foremost, and just never give up. Excellent. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And I will be attending your event. Can't wait. And um, I'm really excited. And well done for what you're doing with your organization and on the projects and everything else. It's absolutely awesome. We definitely need this. So, guys, I hope you was blessed. I know I was surely blessed. Until next time, I'll see you on another episode to meet another No Ordinary Woman. Bye for now. And that is